morning and welcome to worship. I invite us to take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship, to center ourselves in God's love and amazing grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. 
one, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Oh, The first lesson comes from Jeremiah, chapter 15. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them. Your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, Thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and to deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling of your wondrous deeds. O oh Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second lesson comes from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Undo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. But associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. 
For by doing this, you'll be heaping burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of the Lord according to Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 through 28. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Humble us by Christ's example of love. Guide us in the path that leads to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. This week, my sermon will focus on our text from Romans, especially the verses 9 through 14. This text focuses on the Christian life in everyday actions. Paul presents his people and us today with 12 principles for everyday life. These principles help build a faithful relationship for both Christians and non-Christians alike. Love is the constant standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics but seek to overcome it with good. Theologian William Barclay expressively interprets and enlightens each of these 12 principles from Romans. Let us take a look at them today. The first principle, love must be completely sincere. There must be no hypocrisy no ulterior motive, no selfish love, which aims to get far more than it is to give. Christian love is cleansed of self. It is a pure ongoing of the heart to others. The second principle, we must hate that which is evil and cling to that which is good. Cling to God and the ways God has given us. It has been said that 
our one security against sin lies in our ability to be shocked by it. So often in our world today, sin doesn't even shock us anymore unless it is so blatant and outrageous are we affected. The words Paul uses are strong. It has been said that no virtue is safe which is not passionate. The third principle, we must be affectionate to one another in Christian love. The word Paul uses for affectionate in Greek is family love. We must love each other because we are members of the one family in Christ. We are not strangers to each other within the Christian church. Much less are we isolated units. We are brothers and sisters connected because we are children of God. The fourth principle, we must give each other priority in honor. More than half the trouble that arises in the church today are concern rights and privileges and prestige for ourselves. We have all experienced this recently when it comes to the face mask issue, haven't we? We hear people say, we have rights. You can't take our rights away from us. We are focusing on our own needs versus the needs of others. It amazes me when I hear this, that the individual saying this miss the whole point. The purpose of the face mask is to protect the other. We have become a people so turned into ourselves that we have forgotten how to reach out and care for one another. The mark of the true Christian is humility. There is enough of the natural person in all of us that likes to get our own way. But the Christian person should not focus on their rights, but on the duties Christ has called them. And that duty is to serve one another. The fifth principle, we must not be sluggish in our eagerness. There's a certain intensity in the Christian life. There is no room for lethargy. We must be enthusiastic. We must seek good over evil. The time is short in this life. How then do we share Christ's love with each other each and every day? The sixth principle, we must keep our spirit energized and not have an I don't care attitude. The Christian person is aflamed for Christ. Let us show the world who we belong to. The seventh principle, serve the Lord. Seize your opportunities as they come. Life presents us with all kinds of opportunities. The opportunity to learn something new or to cut out something wrong. The opportunity to speak a word of encouragement or of warning. The opportunity to help or to comfort. One of the tragedies of life is that we so often fail to grasp these opportunities when they arise. We've all been there. The Holy Spirit nudges us to say something, to do something, when we see something being done wrong or against Christ. And we stand mute, trying to figure out what to say or do, and then the opportunity passes. The next time the Holy Spirit nudges you, respond. It is God calling you to action. The eighth principle, we are to rejoice in hope. 
We must be optimistic, knowing that all things come together for the glory of God. Christ's grace is sufficient for all things, and strength is made perfect in weakness. May we know that God will give us the strength to endure all things through Christ. The ninth principle, we are to meet tribulation and triumphant courage. When Nebuchadnezzar cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the burning, fiery furnace, he was amazed that they took no harm. He asked if the three men had not been cast into the flames, and they told him it was so. And he said, but I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. A person cannot meet anything when they a person can meet anything when they meet it with Christ. Christ is with us, enduring these challenges with us. We do not walk alone. The tenth principle, we are to persevere in prayer. Is it not the case that there are times in our life when we let day upon day, week upon week, Go by without speaking to the Lord. We are rushed in the morning and say, I will do my devotions later. And then night comes and the busyness of the day weighs heavily on us and we forget. No one should be surprised when life collapses when we insist on living a life alone without asking God to lead us. We are bound to get lost. The eleventh principle, we are to share with those in need. In a world bent on getting, we as Christians should be bent on giving. Because we know that all we have been given is the Lord's. The Lord provides so that we may share what we have been given with those who have none. And the twelfth principle, the Christian should have a heart of hospitality. A home can never be happy when it is a home filled with selfishness. Christ has taught us to have an open hand, an open heart, an open door, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. While we as Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, as Christians we are called to seek to live at peace and to offer forgiveness to all people. Christ has set the example. Christ gives us our true identity as unique children of God. And without Christ, we are lost. May we consider these principles as we go forth for the sake of Christ, loving one another as Christ has loved us. Amen. Sometimes the old familiar songs that we hear on the radio have a connection to God that we don't even realize. By changing just a few simple words in this song, it's a modern day hymn. And we don't always realize or remember that that's what he asks us to do, is to call on him. We may not always realize it, but he is there, right with us, standing by us. Be up. 
ask upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand, stand by me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand now. Stand by me. Stand by me. Worship continues with professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became a truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church the world, and all who are in need. Each prayer will end, Lord, in your mercy, and our response is here, our prayer. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in the life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, Pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of all nations, you call us to live peacefully with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers, spoken and unspoken, to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and also with you. Until we can meet again as the whole body of Christ break the one bread and share the one cup, I invite us to pray this prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life that nourishes and sustains us. Since we today cannot gather to share the bread and cup, dwell in our hearts and reveal to us again that we are the body of Christ in our vulnerable flesh for our baptism into your death and resurrection and in service to the world you love. Be for us manna in the wilderness open our eyes to see you present in every meal and in all who hunger for bread, for human touch, for justice, for healing and hope. We pray in your name, our healer and companion. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. 
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.